What's up everyone, my name is Zach and welcome or welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering another new release and that is The Mercy of Gods. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you haven't already, subscribing to my channel it does help me get these new releases to review for you guys, so I really appreciate it. And a like on the video also goes a long way. But most importantly, in the comments, please let me know if you have read the Expanse series, you will see why talking about that is gonna be so important to me at the end of this video. So if you've read the Expanse series, please let me know what you thought about it, especially after hearing my thoughts on the mercy of gods. Like I would love to know. And then also in the comments, even if you haven't read the Expanse series, let me know if you plan to read this, like your general thoughts about sci-fi because I have a lot to say in this video and I hope that I'm able to articulate it. So I finished The Mercy of Gods. I got a copy um, from NetGalley. So thank you so much to the publisher for an early copy in exchange for an honest review, which is what I'm gonna be doing in this video to the best of my ability. Talking about a book like The Mercy of Gods can be difficult. This is gonna be a spoiler-free review. Um, I do have notes on my phone to read from because this is gonna be a really tough book to review for me specifically. So. One of the reasons, The Mercy of Gods um, is actually one of my most anticipated books of the year. And um, sadly, I'm reporting that I gave it three stars. But before you click off the video, there are a lot of reasons for that that I want to talk about, some of which was within the author's control and then others was not. I would say my overall enjoyment of reading this book was like a 1.5 star, but I did not rate it that because for me to rate a book one star means that something went horribly wrong. There's something offensive. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, et cetera, et cetera. And I do not feel that way about this book. However, my, my enjoyment was not, this was not a fun read for me. And I still have a lot to say, which is why I'm making this video and I'm sharing my opinions with you all. So some things to know about me going into this review, I don't read a lot of sci-fi, um, but I wanted to read this because I've wanted to read this Expanse series for so long because everybody talks about how good it is. It got its own TV show. Um, if you guys play video games, there's a series called the Telltale Games, which are like story-based walkthrough um, experiences. And the expense was so um, it is said to be so character driven and thought provoking that it was made into one of the Telltale video games. So I was like, okay, I haven't got to the Expanse series yet, but clearly this author knows how to write character driven sci-fi stories, which if I'm ever going to get into sci-fi, it's going to be a character driven one. So when The Mercy of Gods came out, I was like, okay, this is a brand new series. It's not related to The Expanse at all. And it's book one. The Expanse series has like 10 books in it. And I was like, okay, this will be a little bit easier to kind of taste test the author um, before I jump into The Expanse series. I do still want to read The Expanse series and I'm a little bit more cautious after my experience with this book, which is why I would love to know after hearing my thoughts on this, if there's anything different that I might feel about The Expanse series. So. I'm going to take a risk here and I'm going to read you guys the synopsis of what the mercy of gods is about because it's complicated and I cannot I I I cannot summarize this book for you all well enough to not read the goodreads um, synopsis. I'm aware that you all can do it yourself, but to save you some energy from having to go and click on Goodreads, I'll read it to you really quickly. If you want to skim through this part while I, while I read this, feel free to, because after this, I'm going to go through my notes um, and my review of the book and talk about that with you guys. So um, I'm also going to butcher some of these things, despite the fact that I used an audible credit for part of this book. Um, I'm still going to butcher some of these sci-fi names, but let's go. How humanity came to the planet called Anjan is lost in the fog of history, but that history is about to end. The Carex, part empire, part hive, have waged wars of conquest for centuries, destroying or enslaving species across the galaxy. Now they are facing a great and deathless enemy. The key to their survival may rest in the humans of Anjan. Caught up in the academic intrigue and affairs of the heart, David is pleased just to be an assistant to a brilliant scientist and his celebrated research team. Then, then the Carrick ships descend, decimating the human population and taking the best and brightest of Anjan society away to serve on the Carrick's homeworld. And David has slept along them along with them. They are dropped in the middle of a struggle they barely understand, set in a competition against other captive species with the extinction as the price of failure, with extinction as the price of failure. Only David and a handful of his companions see past the Darwinian contest to the deeper game that they must play to survive, learning to understand and manipulate the Karaks themselves. 
With a noble but suicidal human rebellion on one hand and strange and murderous enemies on the other, the team plays a horrible price to become the trusted servants of the new rulers. David is a simple man swept up in events that are beyond his control and more vast than his imagination. He will become the champion of humanity and its betrayer, the most hated man in history and the guardian of his people. This is where his story begins. So that sounded a lot more epic than the story felt. I'm not even going to lie. Okay. Let's talk about um, my thoughts and feelings because I have a lot of them. First of all, if you do or if you are interested in reading this book, I would recommend the audio. It is really good. I could not have gotten through this reading it physically, uh, period. There are a lot of characters. A lot gets thrown at you at once. And if you're not used to sci-fi, I read a lot of fantasy, so I'm used to that a bit. But being thrown in with the sci-fi elements, something that's really heavy in this book is the research. There is a lot of talk about what these teams are researching and why it's important and the specifics of the research and things like that. So I would just be aware of that, um, that there, there's a lot of talk about, about research. Um, so some notes that I wrote is, I feel like there's a lot being talked around. I just wish a little bit of it was more explicitly stated, which is the opposite of what I typically want in books. So usually something I talk a lot about is I prefer if books do less telling and more showing and that's a problem in like some of the thrillers i read and even some of the romance however with this there was not enough telling there was a little too much showing where i could not put the pieces together like it felt like i was dropped into the middle of a series rather than the first book in the series and also there was so much info dumping in other ways that i felt like it was too much. I don't know, it was a really weird experience where I was just like, most of the time I was like, what is actually happening? I will say there were some thought provoking things around life and um, civilization and keeping civilization going and what that means and what that could look like. It very much is a good guy versus bad guy story. Um, and again, I wrote later in my notes, there's a feeling of not enough being said. Is it because I don't read a lot of sci-fi? The author sees the world. So like the author created this world and he can see it clearly, but he's not letting us in enough. Like I, I felt like it was really, that part was really missed for me. There's also a lot of animal research, which if that's something that triggers you or is tough for you to read, I just wanted people to know about that. There is some really good mental health rep with one of the characters I think that's talked about throughout the book. Um... I wrote, it was missing a lot of heart. Like, because I felt so disconnected from the characters due to these other things, I felt like the story missed a lot of heart. Like, the overarching idea is that this big civilization um, keeps taking people captive and making them work for them, which, you know, we've seen a lot across our real life. And so I think writing a story about that is really important. And there, there could have been a lot more heart and emotion in that that I felt like was really missing in the story. Yeah, and then I wrote, um, this, this is for hardcore sci-fi fans. This is not, in my opinion, as a beginner sci-fi reader, this, this is not a good place to start. Something else I wanted to do is one of my friends actually read this book at the same time and took notes. And she also does not read a lot of sci-fi, which is why we read it around the same time. And I wanted to read you guys her notes so that you could hear... A, another perspective, even though the overarching opinion of hers was the same, but in her notes, she said things a little bit different than me that I think I actually had her send them to me because I thought that they would be really helpful for you guys. So she wrote, so these are just like random thoughts written down in a notes app, just like I do. So they might feel a little disjointed as I read them, but I think that it will be helpful for those of you wondering if this is a book you want to read. So she wrote, how am I supposed to remember all of these names? <laughs> I love the consciousness of the swarm and that we seem to be learning along with it. The swarm is like this idea I can't really explain because you need to read the book, but it, it is kind of what it just what it sounds like. Um, it seems very political, but doesn't give enough information to gasp to grasp what's at stake. So while it's interesting, it feels a little confusing. I get I got confused between the two siblings and, and the two who are together. So that was a bit yikes for a second or two. Yeah, there's. Also, this these two siblings that you follow, and they can be a little bit confusing as well. I would definitely struggle to stay connected to the story if I was solely listening or reading. Combining definitely helps. So she recommends reading physically and listening at the same time. I feel like I would prefer to know more. I feel a bit lost since I can't get a grasp on exactly where or when these things are taking place. In some ways, that's good, I suppose, as it leaves your mind free to create your own image and doesn't narrow it down, but it takes me out of the story a little. Agreed. I agree that it seems as though we've been placed into the middle of a series. There 
things are stated as though we are there are already known facts, I guess you're supposed to go with the flow. The synopsis says they are dropped into the middle of a struggle they barely understand. This is exactly how reading this book feels. I do like the deception, the depictions of aliens, etc. Actually, the not knowing makes it feel strangely um, claustrophobic, puts you in the same position as the characters. Yeah, I totally agree. Honestly, the battle scenes had me lost. I had to seriously concentrate on what was happening. That being said, it was pretty tense and propulsive. Some very thought-provoking similes, it's very easy to relate to situations, to some real-life events, even though on the surface it seems so far removed. Um, I think I would have liked it more, I think I would, would have liked to know more about why these characters are the best and brightest and why the research they're doing is so important. That was really missing and that's something that I kind of talked about just a minute ago. Places are a strange mix of very descriptive but also kind of disjointed. I can picture places but not in relation to the overall structure exactly. Um, and then she wrote, how in the hell am I only halfway through? It, this book was really tough to enjoy at parts because it was pretty confusing. There are going to be a lot of you sci-fi readers who don't agree with this because you're very used to this. But I'm just trying to get across that like as an intro sci-fi reader, either read this with other people or like take your time and do at least part of the physical. So the rest of her notes, I'm missing the connection ruins between the characters. The worlds are there, but the feeling is not. I don't... I don't really feel the threat from the bad guys. It feels like it's ramping up, but I still don't feel the high stakes. Even the parts that I know are supposed to feel emotional just aren't, hitting it all because I don't care about these characters. Okay, my sense of the timeline is way off. They're saying it may have been years since the start of the story. Back to confusion, I don't really understand some of the characters' motiva motivations. I'm, st I'm still mostly enjoying the writing. This author definitely has a way with words. I just wish I cared more about the characters for the words to hit home more. Completely agree. The writing in this book is really good. However, it's hard to care when you don't quite understand and you don't feel the emotion and the heart. Okay, last bit of her thoughts says, final thoughts. It's official. High concept sci-fi is just not for me. Not once during this book did I feel engrossed in the story or have any of the emotional highs or lows that I get with other genres. It all seemed to a little pointless and inconsequential. Not a lot happened in this book and it felt long and drawn out. It felt like a slog, but that's because I'm not a sci-fi fan. I think if this was my preferred genre, I would have eaten this up because the writing is very good. The descriptions of the characters were vivid and there are elements of body horror. And I would imagine that if you're truly invested in the story, there would be moments of tension and peril. I'm glad I gave it a try though. Yeah, same. I mean, very relatable. So those are like two very similar opinions of two people who don't typically read sci-fi. Hopefully this video has at least intrigued you if you want to give it a try and if you're a sci-fi fan hopefully the things that I've described that I didn't like you love because those are very typical aspects of a sci-fi video or um, book. So yeah, that's my quick review of The Mercy of Gods. Um, man, I still call me crazy, but I still really want to read the Expand series because something tells me that series is way more character driven and please in the comments help a boy out. Like if you <laughs> read sci-fi, if you've read the Expanse series and you've heard all these things, please let me know if they're different or if they're not different. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this review and uh, don't forget to let me know all the things in the comments and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.